Hi guys and welcome back to Dark Matter Podcast. I'm Avalon. And I'm Dominique. Before we start, we just wanted to make an announcement that we are starting to film our podcast for YouTube. So if you guys just want to watch and hang out with us every Monday, those videos will be up and our channel is just Dark Matter Podcast. So go and hang out with us. So today we're going to talk about an unsolved mystery, which is who was Jack the Ripper? Um, but before we start, we want to give you a warning that the details in this episode are going to be pretty gruesome. So just keep that in mind. If you get, you know, easily disturbed, it might not be the episode for you. So let's get right into it. So, if you're not aware, Jack the Ripper was the name of an infamous serial killer who was active in Whitechapel, London around 1888. He was also known by the names the Whitechapel Murderer and Leather Apron. And I think one of the reasons this serial killer is so infamous is the fact that we don't really know too much about him or his victims. No one's ever really sure how many victims he does have. There are the known canonical five, but again, um, those are just speculation. We don't have, like, real proof. So there were about a dozen murders that happened between 1888 to 1892 that many have speculated might actually be the work of Jack the Ripper, but only five women are actually considered to be his victims. And we would just want to give you guys a little background on British history too, so you can get a sense of what life was like at the time. So during the mid-19th century, there were a lot of immigrants and refugees from other parts of Europe, and by 1888, there were approximately 80,000 residents in London's East End. So as you can imagine, this led to a lot of overcrowding and work and housing conditions that were really poor. Also, robbery, violence, and alcohol consumption were pretty common because of, you know, the overwhelming poverty, which led many women to turn to prostitution in order to survive. And because of this and other socioeconomic factors, Whitechapel came to be known as a den of immorality or, you know, in modern terms, the ghetto, basically. And of course, this reputation was only increased by a series of murders that was about to occur in the area. Right. And one thing to keep in mind is obviously the police did not have the resources that we have now. They didn't have computers. They didn't have really anything that we have now. Um, so that combined with the, f the fact that there is just so much going on in this area um, and there was numerous attacks against women in the East uh, End made it very difficult to determine if these murders were committed by multiple people or a single person. I think that's kind of part of why it's so interesting to look at Jack the Ripper because right. we have literally no clue who he was. We have no clue even who his victims were. Like we said, mm -hmm. there's the canonical five, but he could have had way more. We have really no idea. Right. So like just because of the time period, it was kind of a perfect storm um, and we just there's just so much we don't know about this case, which makes it really interesting. Um, but there were 11 murders that occurred between April of 1888 and February of 1891, and they were collectively known as the Whitechapel murders. Um, there's a lot of different opinions and theories about the possible victims, but only five are considered to be Jack the Ripper's victims. Again, the canonical five. Um, and all of his victims were female sex workers who worked in the Whitechapel district. And their murders occurred from August to November of 1888. So just to clarify, because I was confused when I first read about this too. So August to November of 1888 were basically like bona fide. Those were Jack's victims. Mm -hmm. Like, at least we think for sure those were his victims. Um, but there were a series of attacks from 1888 all the way to 91 that we aren't sure if those were his victims as well. Um, so these particular murders were attributed to a single serial killer, mostly because they had very, very brutal, like just the brutal nature of the attacks. Um, and the victims that were attributed to Jack the Ripper, Ripper had their throats cut as well as abdominal mutilations. So that's where the name comes from. Mm -hmm. um, and the name Jack the Ripper became synonymous with these murders because of a letter from a person who claimed to be the murderer, um, which was spread by the media. So we kind of talked about this earlier, that even back then, people were doing that, like sending in yeah. false tips and saying, like, I'm the murderer. Like, I mean, it could have been him, but, like, I don't think, I, I think it probably wasn't. Right, yeah. <laughs> and also, um, that's something that we still see nowadays, too. I feel like the mm -hmm. media kind of sensationalizes these mm -hmm. kind of things, which is obviously wrong. We don't want the individual himself to gain notoriety. We should definitely focus on the victims, but sometimes that, of course, doesn't always happen because, right. like we said, like, a murderer is newsworthy, and that's what everyone wants yeah. to hear about. I think we'll get into that later, too, that, like, especially like with him he had three different names you know mm -hmm. what I mean whoever he was that like that people went like like referred to him as and I know it's difficult because it's like how are you supposed to talk about the same person that's committing the crimes without yeah. and you have no idea who it is without making a name but once you make the name it's like is that what they wanted they want a notoriety so yeah we'll get into that more later um but yeah it's kind of a 
a gray area. It's annoying yeah. that we, you know, that he has this name and he's like infamous. Definitely. Cause I mean, obviously it is important to identify them, but again, giving them this name, I feel like gives them a little bit of power that they yeah, definitely don't it deserve. Goes through their head. Yeah. yeah. But first let's get into his victims. So his first known victim was Mary Ann Nichols and her body was found around 3.40 a.m. on Friday, August 31st in 1888 in Whitechapel. She had actually been seen alive just one hour before her body had been discovered and she had two cuts to her throat. One of them was so deep that it had cut all the way through the tissue. She'd also had a deep jagged wound on her lower abdomen as well as other incisions. Only one week later, on Saturday, September 8th, the body of Annie Chapman was discovered near the doorway of a backyard. And just like Mary Ann, she had two deep cuts on her throat. However, unlike Mary Ann, her murder had been far more gruesome. Annie's abdomen had been completely cut open, and a section of flesh from her stomach had been placed on her left shoulder. Her small intestines had also been removed and placed on her right shoulder. Her autopsy revealed that her uterus, as well as sections of her bladder and vagina, had also been removed. And a witness claimed to have actually seen Annie around 5.30 a.m. with a dark-haired man wearing a brown hat and a dark coat. His next two victims, Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Eddowes, were both killed on Sunday, September 30th in the early morning. And Elizabeth's body was found around 1 a.m. Her cause of death was a single deep slash on her throat, which had severed her left carotid artery and trachea. But unlike the other victims, her body had not been mutilated, which actually has led some people to wonder if her attack was interrupted because, again, the others were so badly mutilated and she wasn't. Uh, several witnesses even told the police that they had seen Elizabeth with a man earlier, but there were conflicting results as to his description. Right, that is interesting that she she wasn't mutilated i thought it was just Mm -hmm. the one thing because yeah some people say like well that could be that he was like interrupted he would he would have done that but it could have also been that like it was just completely unrelated like it was a robbery gone wrong Mm because like you said there was a lot of robberies down there yeah so just again there's so many things we just don't know about this case it's crazy i think if it happened now it's just interesting um so the next victim was Catherine edows i think is how you say i'm not i think edows Eddowes. Catherine Eddowes, yeah. I'm going to go with Eddowes. Yeah. Um, and she was found only 45 minutes after Elizabeth had been discovered. So her throat had been slashed and there was a deep jagged wound on her stomach. Um, her intestines were found draped over her right shoulder, her left kidney, and a major part of her uterus had also been removed. Um, her face was disfigured and her nose was severed. Her cheeks were slashed and there is a slash on each of her eyelids as well. Um, they found a triangle-shaped incision carved onto her cheeks. So... We've already said it. This is a very brutal episode. Yeah. It's just disgusting the thing that the things he did to these women. Um, and his last known victim was Mary Jane Kelly, and she was found around ten forty five a m on Friday, November ninth, um, on the bed of her single room. And so her face had been so badly disfigured that she was hardly recognizable. Her body was also extensively disfigured. Her throat had been severed down to her spine, which, Oh my god, I had to think about that for a second, like, to even comprehend that. It's so disgusting. Um, And almost all of her organs had also been removed, like the last victims. Um, Her uterus, kidneys, and one of her breasts had been placed under her head with other organs placed near her foot and around the bed. And on a bedside table, they found sections of her abdomen and thighs. One of the things they didn't find at the scene, though, was her heart. So that kind of leads you to wonder... What did like, he do with did the he heart? Take it, yeah, did right. he did he eat it? Did he bury it? Like, what did he do with it? Like, that's because you know there's been other cases of people doing things like that, and it's just or keeping it even as as a like trophy. trophies. Yeah, and if you think about it, it was so impacted there, like you said, that's like how do you, where, how do you even start to look for people? Mm. You know what I mean? Because there's so many people there. God, disgusting, and it's just crazy. Right. I mean, this entire case, this entire. Things surrounding the serial killer is definitely mysterious because again we don't have too many details and like we mentioned before Mary Jane Kelly is believed to be Jack the Ripper's last victim but there were other murders that occurred around the same time mm-hmm. so it was thought that some of these could also be his work right so on December 20th the strangled body of a 26 year old Rose Mila was found and there was no sign of a struggle and the police initially thought that she had accidentally hung herself while drunk or had committed suicide however there were cord marks that were found on one side of her neck which suggested that she had been strangled 
Also, Alice McKenzie was murdered on July 17th of 1899 in Castle Alley, Whitechapel. She was found with two stab wounds to her neck and her left carotid artery had been severed. Several minor bruises and cuts were also found on her body, along with a seven inch long cut beneath her left breast all the way to her navel. And one interesting thing to note too is that one of the examining pathologists named Thomas Bond believed that this was the work of Jack the Ripper. However, his colleague George Baxter Phillips, who actually had examined the bodies of the three previous victims, Victims actually disagreed with that. Yeah, I think that's very interesting because George Baxter Phillips, he actually examined three of the bodies and he was like, I don't think this is it, but then someone else thinks it was. Mm -hmm. So who knows? It could have been. Right. Again, just adding to the just we just have no idea. We have no idea who it was, honestly. Right. Just adding to the mythos of who Jack the Ripper actually could be. Exactly. Um so with the other victims, there is a decomposing headless and legless torso that was found beneath the railway arc in Pension Street in White uh, Whitechapel on September 10th of 1889. And the victim was unidentified because it was just a torso. Mm -hmm. uh, but she was between her 30s and 40s. Um, and she was known as the Pension Street Torso, which we talked about earlier. It sucks. Like, imagine right. you're known as a torso. Like, they, they couldn't even identify her because mm -hmm. it was literally, her head was gone. Like, that sucks. Um, but there's bruising on her back, hip, and arm, which indicated the victim had been extensively beaten shortly before her death. And her torso had also um, also had extensive mutilation. She appears to have been killed approximately one day prior to the discovery of her torso. So you know, we were kind of talking about this earlier, too, that, like, I wonder how, how they could tell that back then. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, how much, how far along they were with science to be like, oh, she was killed one day. Because it said she was decomposing. I don't know. I just think that's interesting. Like, how did they even know that she was killed that day? But Anyways, right, because I don't think, they definitely didn't have, like, DNA technology back course, then, so yeah. it's, it's definitely interesting to see what they can still figure out all yeah. the way back in the 1800s. Yeah, for sure. And then the last one we're going to talk about was on February 13th of 1891, so it was the very end, um, and police constable Ernest Thompson discovered a 25-year-old sex worker named Frances Coles lying beneath a railway arc at Swallow Gardens, um, also in Whitechapel. And so her throat had been deeply cut, but her body was not mutilated. So just like the one we talked about earlier, um, people think that uh, Thompson, the the constable, interrupted her assailant. So mm -hmm. probably something else was going to happen to her, but then he interrupted him and the guy ran away or something like that. Um, so Coles was still alive, but she did die before medical help could arrive, unfortunately. Um, and James Thomas Sadler had been seen earlier with Coles. So, of course, he was arrested by the police and charged with her murder. But he, well, people thought he was Jack the Ripper for a bit, but he was discharged later because there was just no evidence. And that was on March 3rd of the same year. So only like, like less than a month later, he was j discharged because they just couldn't prove that it was him. Right. Okay, so now we're going to get into more of, like, the discussions and theories about Jack the Ripper, and I do just want to put out a disclaimer. This isn't based off, like, any particular research. I mean, well, it does have, like, some details, of course, from the murders, but this is also more of our, like, interpretations and our theories, like, what we think about the case. Right. So one thing we did want to mention is that the theories about the murders being connected actually intensified in September and October of 1888 because Scotland Yard and the media outlets received several letters from people claiming to be the killer and the name Jack the Ripper actually came from one of these letters and it was widespread throughout the media. However later on it was thought that this letter had originated from either a media outlet who had wanted more viewers or wanted to increase their popularity so the actual validity of the letter is definitely in question. One interesting thing that I thought of was the fact that all of the five canonical murders took place at night on or close to the weekend. That is interesting because that almost like makes you think that, I mean, because I know probably working hours were definitely different back then. It wasn't yeah. like we had like the nine to five that we have now. Like back then it was different. Um, people work for much longer hours. But it does make you wonder, like, was this a guy who was just like a normal dude who had a job? Mm -hmm. You know, because if it was in the nights and the, and the weekend or around the weekend, you'd think that those were probably the times that he had off of work. Right. So it kind of makes you think, like, did he just live a normal life and just, like, go to work during the day, and then at night he just went out and killed women? Like, and that wouldn't be, 
that uncommon for serial killers actually there's been serial killers like that a lot of them just have like pretty normal lives and then it comes out that they've killed all these people and people you know neighbors or people in their life are like what the hell like Mm -hmm. they had no clue you know right I mean obviously that is I mean I guess that is something that is easy to hide I mean I wouldn't think so but obviously there are serial killers now and of course it was probably even harder to find them back then because like we said um there was definitely the lack of technology the overpopulation and other factors like that but one thing that we did want to mention though is that the medical examiner who conducted Catherine Edo's post-mortem said that in his opinion the mutilation of her body would have taken at least five minutes and also so obviously the guy like most people assume that he did have like some sort of medical knowledge again because of Mm -hmm. all the mutilations all of the um removal of bodily organs and you know the mutilation was very extensive so we have to think the fact that this was all done out in public as far as we know um he didn't really dump the bodies he seemed to have just killed them in the Mm -hmm. area that they were found in so yeah i guess it just does lead the question of how much does he know to be able to perform these acts in such a quick amount of time without being that, seen? That's a good point, actually. I never thought of that, because you don't think of it as, like, like in, that you would need medical knowledge to just, like, kill someone. Mm-hmm. But, like, he didn't just kill them. That is a good point. Like, he didn't just kill them. He cut them open. He took their organs out. Like, he... And it seems like from... Like, once you read enough about, like, the different cases, it seems like he took similar organs out. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? So it's, like, I think he had to know at least, like, kind of where they were, how to get them out, which mm-hmm. is so disgusting. But it kind of does make you wonder, like, was he a doctor or something? Right. Because, I mean, actually, that would kind of make sense because I would think that doctors would have somewhat better hours than just like a factory worker who's working like mm-hmm. whatever 15 hours a day or something crazy like that so maybe he was a doctor or something right. because like how would he know because I mean obviously like there's like it says like some of them were really like jagged like cuts mm-hmm. and everything but he didn't have any time like he was in public like we've said and you're pretty much never alone in the city because it was so packed no matter what hour of the night it is So he, like, although they weren't, like, perfectly, like, you know, perfect incisions or anything, he did it really quick. So that is something to consider that I never even thought about. Like, he could have been a doctor or at least had medical knowledge. Um, I wonder if the police considered that or maybe that wasn't on their mind. I think so. And then they, well, they definitely did because, again, uh, it was speculated that he could have some sort of, like, medical expertise. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that leads people to think, like, oh, maybe doctor. And, of course, if you were a doctor, you do tend to be, like, a higher class citizen. You aren't, um, I don't know, I don't want to say, you aren't from the poorer class because in this area that is mostly people from the poorer class, like we mentioned, like, immigrants, sex workers, stuff like that. So, I guess that does bring about the question of, you know, could he be one of their clients? Because I we did mention before that some of the victims had witnesses come forward and claim to have seen them with a man shortly before they were killed. And that brings the question of, was that Jack the Ripper? Could he have been one of their clients, booked their time, and that's when he ended up yeah. killing them? And that kind of would be a perfect cover to be a doctor. Because like you said, you're seen in more of like, you know, a higher regard. That's yeah. so true today. That if you're a doctor, people are going to... People are not going to assume you're a killer, you know what I mean? You're not going to be the first, like, suspect because it's kind of... I feel like there's kind of an assumption that you have better things to do with your time, I guess. I don't even know what the assumption is, like, because you're a doctor, you're a good person. Well, I guess it's also, like, if you're choosing to spend your life helping people, you're probably not a horrible person, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's why doctors are so respected and it's a lot of education that goes into it. So I feel like that would be a good cover if you think about it because people aren't going to just straight off the bat think like oh it was you know so and so the doctor like people generally trust doctors some some people not everybody Mm -hmm. um yeah that is really interesting I never because when I think of Jack the Ripper I definitely don't think of like an esteemed doctor you know what I mean that's like not what comes to mind but that definitely could have been the case and that maybe that's why he got away with it Yeah, and then another thing to note, too, is that all of his known victims were sex workers, and obviously, hearing the details of their case, it is easy to see just how gruesome their murders were, and it it kind of makes me question, like, was this a hatred? I mean, obviously, he probably had some sort of hatred towards women to be able to do these type of acts to them, but also is it specifically towards sex workers like we mentioned before was it purely out of the ease of finding those victims like they were the most easy to get a hold of or was it specifically because of sex workers because you know if you have seen like 
shows like Criminal Minds and stuff, they kind of go into deeper into the psychology of w- how what makes these serial killers tick. So, I mean, it kind of makes me wonder, does he have anything against sex workers personally? Or again, was it just the were they just easy targets? Yeah, because like you said, like that was something we talked about earlier that sex workers are often the victims of serial killers because Mm -hmm. like we said they're just they're easy targets in the way that like obviously like their whole job depends on picking up random people you know what I mean like obviously that's just you're going to be a target in that way which is really unfortunate um and they also don't get to they don't tend to have the same um like urgency put on them when they're killed by the police which is really unfortunate right um in some cases even like if they're if they're raped or if they're injured but not killed um they can be hesitant to go to the police because I mean, you're what you're doing is illegal right so right. it's like it's like you yeah you could go to the police but they're gonna be like well now we're gonna lock you up you know mm-hmm. what i mean also so, i feel like there's this misconception that well, this is what you chose to do, so you deserve what happened to you, which obviously is wrong. Like, no one ever deserves for that to happen to them. But that does make it more difficult to solve cases like these, of course. Yeah, and I think that uh, most of these women, I would assume, did this out of necessity, not because it was their passion. Like, especially in this area, it was rough. Um, So they definitely did it because... I feel like because they had to. Right. And like think- we mentioned before, like most of them did this as five because a lot of them were immigrants. I don't imagine that they had a lot of, you know, job training prospect, or, yeah, yeah draw, job prospects. So, like we said, like it was a very hard time during the 1800s. They were basically just doing what they had to to survive. Right. And one thing that I thought of too is that like like we were saying, yeah, like it could have been sex workers because it was just easy target. But it also could have been that like, I think sometimes uh, these, like, men that are serial killers attack sex workers because, like you were saying, they hate women, right? So they might have this view. The The example that came to my mind was incels. If you know what incels are, they're, like, incel is short for involuntary, involuntarily celibate. Basically, they can't get laid, and they're mad about it, <laughs> and there's, like, a whole community of them, but it's, like... I'd never heard of this before you told me. I really, thought it was really insane. Yeah, yeah, it's so bad. They're very toxic. They believe things like like that the government should provide them girlfriends so basically okay. women should be enslaved that's basically their belief um they're crazy basically is what i'm getting right. at and there was actually a a guy who went out on a killing rampage who was an incel um so it has real life implications mm-hmm. um but the reason i bring them up is because they kind of have this this view of like women are all whores like that's the kind of thing they'll say and so I could imagine that if whoever Jack the Ripper was, if he was that kind of guy, like he had that kind of um, perspective of women, then it makes sense that he would go after sex workers because then he's like, he's killing the women that he thinks like all women are like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because, um, you know, if he goes after someone who's, you know, on the straight, narrow, whatever, who has a really like clean life and isn't a sex worker or anything like that, it's really hard to justify why you did that. Right. But, and it's still in reality there's no justification for killing a sex worker but in his mind maybe he saw it as like well this is what all women are you know what i mean so he went after sex workers so Mm -hmm. i feel like there could be a deeper psychology there um like the psychology of it could be deeper than just oh they were easy victims it might have been that he had something against sex workers or specifically just or i mean more broadly just against women in general so right there's a lot um there's there's just so many different things we could look at with this. It's hard to, like, narrow it down. Yeah, especially since, again, it happened so long ago, and obviously this is still unsolved today, and it may never be solved, but we kind of like to dive into the possible psychology of these serial killers because that's something we're both interested in. And something that kind of popped into my head was, again, like, all of this, it is possible that this could span from, like, childhood trauma having to deal with, like, probably issues with his mother and again this is all speculation but that's something that did occur to me because you know obviously if you do have hatred towards women it sometimes does span from something that happened from your childhood or maybe like you said like he was just rejected over and over by other women and something interesting to note is that the violence did seem to escalate like in the beginning there weren't as many mutilations however you know as his victims were found there were more mutilations more removal of body parts um his last victim had her heart removed and it wasn't found so again like we can only guess as to what he did with it like did he decide to keep it as a trophy or i don't again we don't know what he did with it and except for elizabeth stride all his victims though were 
pretty badly mutilated. Yeah, and I think that's something that happens even with, like, more modern serial killers because we don't really have serial killers, like, as much these days, like, Mm -hmm. almost none. Um, And there's reasons behind that. Like, I looked this up before. Like, why don't we have serial killers anymore? Not that I want them. But, like, um, it's honestly, it's it's basically because the the police, like, um, with their identification and everything, with the computer systems, like, it's just very... It's pretty much impossible to be a serial killer now. But with contemporary cases like Ted Bundy and, like, people like that, I think that has been the case, too, with some of them, that, like, they've gotten, I guess, ballsier as the as the cases go on. Like, you know, first they just kill someone. Right, like, increasing the muti- confidence. Yeah, yes. the mutilation gets worse and worse. And maybe, like, the they kind of get sloppier in a way, too. Like, they're just... I mean, with him, he left them in the open every single time. Yeah, that's but, something I was thinking, too, is that it also, like, seems... Obviously, he didn't think very much of these women. I doubt that he yeah. saw them as human at all. And the fact that he didn't even try to hide these bodies, again, yeah. could be because either he didn't care if they were found or he just thought of them as garbage and they didn't even deserve to be, like, covered or anything like that. Yeah, and I think that also speaks to his own narcissism because he thought, which correctly, unfortunately, he was correct in this, but he assumed that he wasn't going to get caught because yes. he was like... I can just kill her, leave her in the open, dip, and nothing's going to happen to me. Mm-hmm. And nothing did happen to him, as far as we know, unless in a, you know, strange act of, like, fate, like, he, like, had a heart attack young or something like that. Like, we don't know what happened to him, but in terms of the law, he was never convicted. Right. Nothing ever happened to him. So it's crazy that, like, it makes me so mad because it's, like, I could imagine in his mind he's, like, oh, I'm so smart. Because a lot of times serial killers are like that. They're yeah, super they, narcissistic. They think, they're, they think very highly of themselves. Yeah, yeah. so he, he probably thought, like, I'm so smart, like, I'm so clever, I'm just going to kill her and I can leave and, like, I'll never get found out. And it's, like, he was right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that makes me so mad that he never did get found out. So, yeah, it's just a very interesting case. So, basically, we don't know who he is, but... Um, It's just interesting to think about. Yeah, and then one of the things to note, too, is, again, like, his last known victim was Mary Ann Kelly, and it was thought that he had stopped after that maybe because he had been incarcerated or he had possibly moved away. That's the thing is, like, this is his last known victim, but, again, um, we don't know for sure. It is possible that he he had done other murders and it was just never linked or... You know, like you said, he could have stopped either for one reason or another. He could have died. He could have moved away. Stuff. You know, it's also possible he could have um, done even more murders that we just aren't aware of. And again, I think that's why this is so interesting is the fact that we really don't know that much about this. And we yeah. definitely are still guessing even year, hundreds of years later. Yeah, that is really interesting. I never thought about the fact that he could have been incarcerated. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you arrested someone for like robbery or something and then you find out he's Jack the Ripper. Right. Which I know that does happen sometimes. Like they'll incarcerate some, somebody for something else. Like, I think that's how, if I remember correctly, Ted Bundy, using that example again, I think he got caught for, like, having a stolen car or something. I think he did, yeah. And then they're like, holy shit, you're Ted Bundy. I think that's how they found him. Um, Yeah, but, like, that's so interesting to me that, like, they could have they could have, like, arrested him. He could have spent his life in prison, and they mm-hmm. didn't even know. You know what I mean? But yeah. that also is not characteristic of a serial killer from the extensive research I've done on serial killers because they tend to like the attention. And they, they tend do, to, like, yeah. like to be known that it was them. You know what I mean? They like to take trophies, and they like to just, like, you know, this the spectacle of it. Mm-hmm, so definitely. it's very peculiar that he never came forward because you'd think that, like, if he was in prison, he would, like, tell his cellmate, like, hey, right. I'm Jack the Ripper. You know what I mean? Because that's usually how they are. So that's interesting to me that, like, he could have been incarcerated. He could have moved away. He could have he could have done so many things. And, I mean, potentially the letters could have been sent. One of the letters could have been sent from him. He right, might have been yeah, doing that. But it, I think that's part of why it's interesting, too, is that, like, it seems like he actually didn't want to. Well, he, like, he was very sloppy, but, right. like, he didn't. He didn't, didn't care come that out. much. Yeah. yeah, I don't think he... Maybe he didn't even care about, like, being known. Like, maybe he really just did it because he wanted to, and he didn't care if he, he was known or not, which is very interesting. Right, and then that kind of ties into what we mentioned before about, like, the media kind of giving him attention, and that's something yeah. that still happens to this day, unfortunately, is serial killers again they do kind of want that attention they want people to know like how great they are they think you know like how how successful they've been and they're so good that they haven't been caught yet they do often send letters to the media and stuff like that but a bad like habit I guess that we've been doing recently is the 
the act of the media kind of giving them these names or these titles, like I said, like Jack the Ripper, we don't even know what his actual name was. It was never clear that it was Jack or anything like that. So again, it, this was just a name. And I feel like that reputation kind of grew with that name. And it's just so synonymous. Like, even if you don't know the details of this case, which we didn't before researching it, right. you definitely are aware of the name and kind of like the, I don't want to say legend, but kind of the legend yeah, behind the it. Legend. You know, you do, you do know like this was a scary guy who killed a bunch of people, and even now, like unfortunately, the victims' names aren't remembered, but Jack the Ripper's name is remembered. Exactly, and he'll be remembered for basically the rest of history. I mm-hmm. would assume. I mean, like, it's. I think that's that's so true. Like this, this happens time and time again. With like, I could think of so many like the Toolbox Killer, the Hillside Strangler, the Zodiac was the Zodiac Killer, yeah. co-ed killer. There was so many. And we give them these names, and then I feel like it emboldens them in a way because they're like, I'm a celebrity. Like, right, isn't that's that basically so what they sick? feel like. Yeah. Like, actually, this I thought this was so interesting. If you guys don't know Marilyn Manson, the musician, um, I like his music. He's not, not for everyone, but I like his music. I'll just say that. Um, but his name, so obviously his, his birth name was not Marilyn Manson. He chose that name because Marilyn Monroe is obviously an icon mm-hmm. and then Charles Manson. And so people see that as like, why would you name yourself after a serial killer? But the reason, well, like Charles Manson didn't kill anyone, but he Technically, had yeah. people kill that, for him. That's so a he whole other story. A serial killer. Yeah. yeah. So People would see it as, like, why did you name yourself that? But his point with him, his name was that Marilyn Monroe and Charles Manson received the same kind of attention. They oh. received the same amount of attention. And right. it's like, of course, in the media, they weren't, they weren't praising Charles Manson, but they are giving him the attention he wanted. And so he was pretty much making the point that, like, we treat, <laughs> we treat our, like, the worst of us, the murderers and rapists, basically like celebrities when they, when it, when they get to a certain level, when they just, like, are doing the most horrible things, then we treat them like celebrities, and that's exactly what they want, a lot of them, Um, and I just thought that was so interesting that it's true, like, he drew that parallel between the way we treat celebrities, which are, you know, famous for their talent, and murderers and serial killers, and that's a very good point, so I think that's something to consider, that we shouldn't give them the attention they they deserve, because some people like of course we love true crime we love that community right. but some people take it way too, there's like a a small sect i would say of the true crime community that like is obsessed with tr- serial killers like in, right. a, in the way that they actually like idolize them which that's you definitely another should thing. Never. Yeah, that's a whole another thing which is very wrong but yeah even just like the normal person who thinks that what they did is disgusting the like we still know these names and we still talk right. about them so it's kind of yeah I think we've talked about this before it's like do we just not talk about them or do we just change the names or do we not give them names or like it's kind of a gray area of like what do we do right I feel like we definitely have to find a middle ground like I said like we definitely have to report on them because it's important to remember their victims but we also shouldn't sensationalize them so that they are kind of the main focus we never want them to be the main focus obviously they did terrible things but you know again that is just something to think about like we definitely want to focus more on the victims rather than the serial killer himself because he should not be getting this attention at all i think it's disgusting right yeah and then there is something i want to mention too is that It's interesting. I wonder if it ever will be solved through maybe like DNA testing, Mm -hmm. because I know that genealogy thing is something that has been used to solve a lot of cold cases. But again, I wonder if this case is too old. Like, did they even collect any evidence back then, like collect any DNA if they had any? So, I mean, I wonder maybe one day it will be solved, but it could also be a mystery that is just never solved. Yeah, because they have like, of course, dug up like people's bodies before, like exhumed their bodies. Um like, later on when they have better, you know, DNA testing Technology, because yeah. they didn't have it back then. But, yeah, that is an interesting point that it's, like, was this, like, just too long ago that they're not going to be able to do that? Right. Or that would be really interesting if one day they found out and they're like, well, shit, he's dead. But, you know what well, I mean? That would yeah, be but... really interesting if, if we ever were able to find out who it was. Right, because, I mean, we can speculate as much as we want, but obviously we're not going to solve this. We're going to know, yeah. And mystery. they're all dead now by, like, anyways. So yeah. It's, it, yeah, that part sucks. But yeah, but that it would, is very true. It would be interesting to see if, you know, it is solved after all these years. I think that would definitely be big news. Yeah. But yeah, so that is the end of our episode, you guys. We hope you enjoyed listening, and we'll be back next Monday with a brand new episode. 
If you guys want to follow us on our social media, our Instagram is at darkmatterpod and our Twitter is darkmatter underscore pod. Also, as always, our sources are going to be on our website, darkmatterpod.com. Right, and if you're listening on Spotify, be sure to follow us. Or if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, we'd appreciate if you left us a review. Um, Also, be sure to subscribe and like us on YouTube if you enjoyed watching. And tell your friends to give our podcast a listen if you enjoy our podcast um, and if they're looking for something to do. We really appreciate you guys listening. We'll see you next week. Bye.